In 1609, when Galileo pointed to space with his first simple telescope with three magnifications, he revolutionized astronomy. With his rudimentary apparatus, he discovered that Jupiter had satellites, that the moon's surface was rough, that Saturn was wrapped in a halo, and that the Milky Way was made up of millions of stars. Without telescopes, modern cosmology could not exist. Everything that is known today about the cosmos has been deduced from the light signals that telescopes capture and analyze, signals that since the Big Bang have been running through time and space, leaving in their trail the trace of everything that has occurred in the history of the universe. Un telescopio. A telescope is basically a collector of photons. If we simplify it a lot, it is like a funnel. What we do is concentrate the very diluted energy that comes to us from the outer world into the focal point, and we do everything we can to be able to extract this information. The larger the collector's surface, the farther we can reach, and the greater the quantity of energy we can collect, which comes to us quite diluted. The truth is that telescopes are the only time machines. When we say that we are looking at a star that is at a distance of hundreds or thousands of light years, we are saying that it is at an enormous distance, because you have to multiply each second by 300,000 kilometers, which is the speed of light. Furthermore, we are saying that that light left the object hundreds or thousands of years ago, and when we speak of galaxies, we are talking about billions of years ago. So when we penetrate distances with a telescope, we're going back in time, and large telescopes attempt to reach, if possible, the origins of our universe. Llegando a ser posible a los orígenes de nuestro propio universo. Astronomers also studied the universe from observatories situated outside the Earth thanks to space telescopes, which allow us to see space without the veil of the Earth's atmosphere. The Hubble is the oldest of these devices. Put into orbit in 1990, it weighs 12,000 kilos, is 9 meters long, and has a 2.5 meter diameter mirror. From its lookout point at 600 kilometers from the Earth, it has taken thousands of digital photographs of the universe that astronomers later transform into images. This one, for example, shows a star with a mass similar to the Sun's, but which is already dead and has hardly any energy left inside. In its process of decomposition, a million years ago it began to expel gas in opposite directions. It's known as the Calabash Nebula and is located 5,000 light years from Earth. Thanks to the Hubble and other similar telescopes, other forms of invisible light or radiation that do not cross the Earth's atmosphere, such as ultraviolet and infrared radiation, X-rays or gamma rays, can be captured. Gamma rays are precisely the most intense radiation of the universe, and they are behind the most violent phenomena and objects, such as black holes, neutron stars, or the active nuclei of the galaxies. When the universe had already spent 10 billion years expanding and recreating itself, in a corner of the Milky Way, a simple cosmic garden began to be formed, which with time would come to accommodate life, our solar system. 
a cloud of cosmic dust crossed with the remains of a great star that had just exploded. The matter that emerged from the crash collapsed on itself. This collapse turned the gravitational energy into kinetic energy, and the temperature rose so much that it provoked thermonuclear reactions. A proto-sun had been born, around which the rest of the nebula began to revolve like a disk. Little by little, all the materials of the nebula were cooling down, and the cosmic dust was turning into great mineral chunks that would help form planets. Once the proto-sun became the sun, an enormous source of heat and radiation was originated that swept the system of all the material that hadn't condensed. That was when those great blocks of matter that revolved around the new sun were colliding and forming groups among themselves until they reached the form and size of the planets. The solar system thus remained constituted by a star surrounded by planets and other cosmic elements like asteroids and comets that revolve in almost circular orbits. It's this system which permitted the appearance of life on Earth, thanks to the violent protection of the sun. The age of the sun, its origin, how it was formed and what its future evolution may be, constituted one of the main concerns of science during the first third of the 20th century. Nowadays, we are confident on several points. We know that the sun produces its energy by means of the transformation of hydrogen, the principal component of the universe, into helium. In this process, it loses a little of the mass that is transformed into energy. Today, we estimate that there's enough fuel for the sun to keep shining in this way, more or less stably, for another 4 to 4.6 billion years. The space probe Ulysses and the SOHO explore the surface of the star of the solar system. The images show a very imperfect star, full of turbulences and protuberances, with great masses of matter forming magnetic whirlwinds on the surface. They are sunspots that reflect the different densities and temperatures of these magnetic whirlwinds. Every so often, they provoke sunstorms, perturbations in the surface from which millions of ionized particles shoot out to the exterior. These particles affect the Earth's magnetic field and cause such spectacles as the northern lights. The exploration of our nearby cosmic environment, the solar system, has not been completed yet. While it seems clear that there are no signs of intelligent life on the neighboring planets, scientists are looking for evidence to prove that other forms of life are possible. In the first place, the conditions necessary for living beings to reproduce themselves, even if in the most simple forms of bacteria, must be determined. They don't have to be exactly the same as those on Earth, but they do seem to require the existence of certain elements, such as water, an organic matter like coal, and a source of energy that makes the chemical molecules that might exist react among themselves. Europa is one of Jupiter's satellites, in which in the long run, scientists have placed the most hopes of finding traces of life. There are reasons to believe that water has existed there for some time, and that under its frozen surface, there is an enormous ocean full of organic molecules. In the orbit of Saturn, the other gaseous giant besides Jupiter, the satellite Titan presents certain similarities to Earth, which also need to be studied. According to the images that the Voyager 1 space probe offered, Titan is surrounded by an orangish atmosphere composed above all of methane. This element appears to be found in solid, liquid, and gaseous states, so that it could act as water does on Earth, as a life-giving element, with cells which carry it inside them, just as ours carry water.
While Europa and Titan await their moment, biologists and physicists continue to study the best and closest candidate to accommodate or to have accommodated life, the planet Mars, where few doubt that at least there is water. In 1975, the exploration of Mars began with NASA's Viking space probe, whose journeys over the land's cold, barren, and irregular surface provided no positive results. 